Hi, everyone. Welcome to our LinkedIn Live. Uh, we're going to go over just some quick nuggets about the May Visa Bulletin. Uh, we weren't able to do a LinkedIn Live last April, but we'll kind of talk about what happened in April as well. Just a reminder, the podcast available in video form on YouTube and Spotify. And we also invite you to follow us on WR Immigration on LinkedIn and subscribe to our newsletter for more information on when episodes will be released. We also do an expanded Q&A episode, so we encourage everyone here to add your questions in the comment section or send us a direct message on LinkedIn with your questions, and we'll address them in an upcoming podcast. The podcast we have, that's the Q&A with Charlie, is called The Bulletin, and we invite you to also watch that as well. If you're watching the recording back, please still drop your questions in the comments or send them directly to us. And with that, we're going to roll over and talk about the May Visa Bulletin. And so, Charlie, we know that the NVC came out with a report. What can you tell us about that report that came out by the NVC? Uh, I thought it was a very interesting report. There were major increases in the amount of demand with applicants with petitions on file at the National Visa Center as of November 1st of 2023. Almost 100,000 additional applicants are at NBC. Uh, I think that this almost guarantees that the rest of world employment second and third preference will continue to have final action dates for the foreseeable future, meaning well into, if not through fiscal 2025. Okay. And then the USCIS published some information too. What can you tell us about that data you saw? Yeah, it's very, it's great that they're starting to publish more of the information. Uh, sometimes it's old by the time it's published, but it, again, it is very nice that they are publishing information so people can get an idea of also their demand patterns and what's happening with their uh, petitions, et cetera. Okay. So now let's talk about the May Visa Bulletin. And what's going on with the employment-based dates for filing? Basically, the dates for filing, the USCIS is not using them. They're only using the Chart A final action dates. Uh, there has been no real ch no changes in the application filing dates. I would not expect any changes uh, p potentially through the summer. They may make a few changes in the later part of the summer if they feel they need to start generating demand for the next fiscal year. Otherwise, any major changes will not occur until the publishing of the October Visa Bulletin in terms of application filing dates. Okay. And then for the uh, chart A, the final action dates, uh, in April, we saw a bit of movement um, for rest of world, all chargeability countries. If EB1 remained current, EB2 moved to January 15, 2023, uh, and then stayed steady in May. And then in April, EB3, uh, rest of world, moved to November 22, 2022, and then stayed steady in May. So any comments about that? Yeah. Uh, back in when we did our podcast in December, I mentioned that I thought that the State Department may have gone to a policy where they are going to make their major changes in the final action dates at the beginning of each quarter, meaning the next ones at that time would be for January and now the April. I think that is proven to be correct. There were major changes for rest of world and the China and India final action dates for the month of April. And now they appear to be holding. There were no changes in the final action dates for May. And I think that there may be slow, if any, movement uh, for the next couple months. Yeah, you talked about that in December and yeah. you were right, as you always are, Charlie. So thanks for your predictions. <laughs> so if we go to China, we saw uh, April 2024 movement in EB1. September 1, 2022, holding steady in May, Visa Bulletin, and then EB2, February 1, 2020, one uh, jump by a month, and then holding steady in May. And then, of course, in EB3, no movement since January, so still at September 1, 2020. So any comments about China? 
Again, I don't think there's going to be much movement for the next few months. The state for both China and India, state has the luxury of knowing there is a lot of demand that's already been uh, filed that the immigration service is pre-adjudicating. Therefore, they can kind of bide their time to see what the demand is coming in based on the April movements and then start to move the dates maybe later in the summer months. Okay. And then if we move to India, in the April visa bulletin, we saw a huge jump. It went from October 1, 2020 to March 1, 2021. Well, huge in our our terms of huge, right? That doesn't seem that big, but it's still a big jump to, for us. And then for EB2, India, uh, movement by a month to April 15, 2012. And then EB3 movement by a month, uh, August 15, 2012, and then May holding steady again. So any comments about that? No, I think that this, uh, particularly in the employment first preference, I, we had been expecting uh, a big movement and and it finally occurred. And the other categories, as I mentioned with China, I think that the big movement for April, that we can uh, assume that there will be little, if any, movement until sometime in the summer. Okay. And then if we do your predictions for the rest of the fiscal year, what are we thinking about seeing in um, all our different categories? In terms of China, I think basically in the first, second, and third preferences for China, it would be up to three weeks, and that would be an average over between now and the end of the fiscal year. Again, I think that they can wait until uh, maybe July, August to start making any big movements. They have enough demand that they can hold off and get a better idea of demand and then move the dates at the end of the year and still maximize number of use under the annual limits. For India, I think it, <clears throat> excuse me, in the employment first, second, and third preference, up to one week of movement for those three categories, as with China, movement in the July through September time frame is more likely. Uh, again, there is just one thing with the, the fact that the rest of the world has final action dates. That means there is no otherwise unused numbers, which can be made available to either India or China. And typically, especially India, they are very dependent upon the use of otherwise unused numbers, and that isn't happening. So India and China are subject strictly to the amount of numbers in the second and third preference available under their per country limit, which is extremely small in relation to what's been available in past fiscal years. Yeah, and we'll talk more about that in our um, bulletin podcast. Uh, so, Laura, why don't you share with us some of your, um, you know, insights on what Charlie has mentioned and the the non movement, I guess, of the May visa bulletin? Yeah, I mean, one interesting thing is that popped in my mind as Charlie was talking was we're seeing EB three China really stall, and that could be because we had clients or foreign nationals switch lanes, right? We saw EB three China leading. And we talk about it a lot where foreign nationals see a line getting shorter and want to hop into that line. So we might be seeing EB3, just to give the why, a potential why, of course, I'm not at USCS, I don't know what's actually happening, but we see clients wanting to jump into that faster line and now we're seeing that line stall. So I think that probably could be um, some of the reason behind the scenes there of why EB3 is stalling. The other trend I'm seeing is I have a number of clients who are kicking off green cards for Chinese national and the EB2 or EB3 that have a 2019 priority date. Um, they're kicking it off early. So this is to say that they had employees join. These employees joined in maybe Q2 or Q3 of uh, 2023. And their priority date was 2019, and it was not yet current for final action, but was getting close. So we advise those clients to consider expediting, initiating the green card processing for those foreign nationals because their priority date would become current soon. Because per processing takes so long, like you know we've quoted before, almost two years to get a certified per. 
So that's Chinese foreign national employees with 2019 priority dates. They certainly need to get in that perm processing as soon as possible because we're seeing their priority date current for final action, although they might still be in the perm process given how long it takes. So that's one thing I've been advising clients is if you're onboarding someone in H1B who has a previously issued priority date, let's take a look at what that date is if we're expecting it to become current soon because we don't want to add any more delay for these foreign national employees who have already been waiting for so long. So to think about your green card policy and expedite or make exceptions, if you have a one-year, 10-year requirement, consider consider an exception for those foreign nationals who have previously issued priority dates that will become current in the near future. Okay. And then what are you also seeing in terms of other employment-based categories people are starting to pivot towards? Yeah. I mean, we're certainly seeing folks who have the ability to move to EB-5, who have the resources, um, that they're considering taking matters into their own hands and pursuing an EB-5. Now, this isn't the area of my practice, um, but I know we have a strong practice here at WR. And in fact, you could tune in uh, to the experts, Joey and, and Charlie, who have their um, podcast dropping today. We're seeing some clients. Yes, I think, Charlie, it's it's the minimum threshold, $800,000. Yes, it is. For, so if the, minimum the new reserves categories. Yeah. And uh, we're seeing our clients cashing out on those those stock options that are doing really, really well for them. If the employees are interested in learning more about the EB-5, we invite you to have them listen to our podcast that's going to be coming out today and then also reach out uh, to the firm. I want to thank Charlie and Laura today for your uh, insights on the May Visa Bulletin. I uh, also want to thank the audience for joining today. Remember, share your questions in, in the comments or send them to us via direct message and we'll answer them in the Bulletin podcast. And then, of course, be sure to follow WR Immigration on LinkedIn and to get the updates on the Bulletin podcast, future chatting with Charlie live streams and more. Thank you.